set in the system that we're using. So I'm using BGB. We're going to play in English. Uh, language does matter, in particular for um, for the last section. So split timing is split timing is really strange in this game. So we start um, about it's about one it's roughly one and a half seconds, and time stops. It, this is really strange, but time stops when you've reached the credit screen. And I actually had to I actually had to complete the game in all three languages in English, French, and German to see which um, which um, ending cutscenes would be the fastest to get through. And surprisingly, it's English by by one cutscene. German wasn't too far behind. It was less characters, but it was one cutscene extra. And French was like four four cutscenes behind, and many characters many characters more. If there was a Japanese version, I think it would be far ahead of all the other ones. But anyway, enough talk. Let's um, let's get straight into this. So basically something has happened and um, the cutscenes, well we can skip most of them but um, but we can't skip the last one. So the last one we have to um, yeah, we have to just mash through it as fast as possible. Didn't get that movement right, anyhow. So the cutscenes in general, they're they're fairly lengthy, so they, they do tell the story, just like um just like as part of a um Tintin comic. So the good thing is in between the stages you can skip them, but the last one you can't skip. So it's it's a shame that it has to be so so um strategic that you've actually got to mash through it in order to get to um get to the final split for the for the credits. So there's a bit of movement throughout the hotel, so we're trying to find trying to figure out what's going on. And basically there's there's a curse. So movement's a little bit dodgy here and there in the stage. Um, getting past that last yo-yo person is a really dodgy point. That wasn't quite right, but anyway. It's not too bad for a start, it could have been faster. Right, so now we've got to try to get ahead of this crystal orb. And with the right timing we can make it go high on the first screen. Is there much RNG? There's... So I've just got to concentrate on this a little bit here. We've just got to get the timing for a, for a boost just right. Um, there isn't a lot of RNG. Um, there's a little bit with some movements, um, like from that first stage. There's more RNG in the fourth stage where we're having to drive a car and having to dodge traffic. That's a lot more RNG. And we get a fast orb here. Wonderful. But um, but otherwise, otherwise a lot of it's controllable. So it comes down to us to what we do. This is all sequential through here. And in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to damage boost through the spikes. Something that wasn't previously done. Eight, nine, ten. Jump there. Good. Two, three. Uh, that was unfortunate. One, two, four, five, six. So that's a really risky method. It's not a method you previously used. Now this is the car. So this is all RNG um, with with the traffic. So we just want to try to maintain a high speed as possible, but um, but we really drift across the road as part of um, as part of turning. Sometimes we can get some effective bypass by just um, braking and getting on the inside or outside. So just getting to that handy acceleration. So the physics are pretty interesting in, in terms of um, how we want to try to get through this section pretty quick. It's 
It's, yeah, it's pretty stressful. Um, you have to really concentrate. So it's it's all sequential. So it took a while to figure out what was um, what was most optimal. And then, um, and then after figuring out the most optimal jumps by using the trees, then noticed, oh, hang a sec, we can spike boost, we can damage boost. And that ended up being, um, that ended up being a much faster method. So in this, so with this stage, it's better to um, better to avoid taking damage. So every time we go up the back of a car or a motorbike, we take one point of damage. The good thing is, if we end a stage with zero health, um, we enter the next stage with um, with one bar. So it's good that the game gives us that chance. Um, but unfortunately, if you have um, more health than that, you can't regain um, you can't regain extra points of health. The only way is to actually collect um, health pots along the way. And some of those we'll be focusing on a bit later on. So there are some pretty risky jumps that that we take throughout. Got a quadruple jump. Three, four. Get to there. Oops, I'm not supposed to do that, but anyway, keep going. It's going to get a bit riskier now. Okay, so I'm going to be going a little bit slower here. There's a really cool uh, crate jump you can do there. Right, we're going to deliberately take spike damage, jump the gap, jump a crate or barrel, jump the gap there, and we want to jump just there. So yeah, it's a little bit stressful. Even these jumps across the trains are very stressful. So I'm gonna grab the one extra point of health just in case something goes wrong. That's very fortunate. And now we go to our first auto scroller. So there's quite a few auto scrollers in this game. Um, the main thing with the auto scrolls, they've got to be done. So they're actually they're a really good challenge along the way, even though it's fixed timing. Uh, that was not good. I actually had to reposition my thumb on the controller just then. Should be okay. Right. So we're trying to find, yeah, we're trying to find this hat since it belongs to the professor. So now we go onto the Pachacamac. We've got to go through a whole sequence of doors and switches to get to the professor. Hey, Mike. Thank you for the good luck and welcome on in. So again, everything is very much sequential at different points. So we've got to make sure we jump that. I'm going to hide in here. I'm going to play it a little bit safer. Normally I take a damage boost off that guy, but... How the run's going? Uh, just got world record in my last run. So we're just doing... Um, so we just had a raid. So just... Um, showing off another run. Right, thank you very much. So I'll be looking forward to trying out, um, I'll probably try out hard mode tomorrow night just to see, see how it plays out. So there's a, there was a previous record that was played on medium level difficulty. So I'm curious to see if that has an effect on any on any sections or um, gameplay features. All right, so we push this across. So we've just got one more lever we need to flick. Should be that one. And we'll get to the professor. 
And after that, we're off to Lama Town. Okay, here we go. So you'd have to watch out for the llamas, they do spit. Like so. so let's see if we get our jump again. It's five out of five tonight. <laughs> won't take the boost because I don't quite have enough health. I want to try to save that health for um for the next stage section. So that's a possible another skip by jumping over that guy, but um, we won't do that just now. Yeah, the next, so this next stage, I discovered there was a way to do this incredibly quicker. So, I'm going to jump down here. It's a lot faster than the old um, world record route. I'll drop that to there. Actually, I shouldn't have to do that now. I've got to stop doing that because there is a way I can boost through that. Jump that. Go down here. Take the damage, and because we have enough iframes, get through there, and that's the end of the stage. Nice little bit of gold. Grab a bit of health. Very important to get the stopwatch on, that, on this stage, because otherwise we do run out of time. Grab a bit more health. Good. Having two points of health is very handy as well. Right, another auto scroller. I've um, got 11 snowballs to get past while jumping rocks. But I've got to say, the, the music is an absolute banger for this game. Infogrames do a lot of good tracks. Snowball. 11. Okay, onto Boat and Paffage. It's amazing what they did with Game Boy tunes um, back then. Okay, so there's our Paff, Paff, Paff with the oar. <laughs> this is why it's called Boat and Paffage. that one it's pretty good yeah um, you can get a little bit of lag here or there um, especially on this stage if you have up to three crocodiles on screen it causes it to really lag out but otherwise otherwise the game holds up really well until I do something silly like that completely forgot my sequence there
Yeah, every level's very different. Every level's very sequential. Um, so I think what a lot of people would often do, from what I, from what I noticed, they would take a, um, take some strategic deaths. But if you plan it out, you can um, you can avoid taking any deaths at all, which was the aim with with my run. So not taking a death just meant yeah saving more time and just end up being a lot more efficient. Okay, finish the last part. So. a little bit there okay so there are two there are two potions I can pick up on this stage and can't afford to take any more damage So every, everything's a bit of a puzzle. So we had to get the branch in order to get up the next section. So we can't skip the next section. Now we get inside the block, push it to there. Magic, Tintin's a magician. Um, make the jump over the boulder. One extra jump, but that's okay. Well, as long as we're at full health. Oops, that's what matters. Make the jump there. This bit can be a little bit annoying sometimes, so that's going to be a little bit of time loss. Get the rope, otherwise if we go to the guide to the right, he will tell us, ah, oh, we need to make a rope bridge. We kind of need some rope. So we're allowed to get one step ahead. Okay, so now the cave. So this is the this is a big part of the speed run. The the next two bits. So the cave. Good. Made the jump first go this time. So the cave and then the infamous sliding puzzle. Um, right. Completely blanked out there for a moment. All right. Should should still have a chance of being able to do this. Won't be easy, but. I shouldn't have taken that damage. All right. So we get one bit of health. Push that across to there. Make the jump. Uh, double. Bounce. And jump immediately to get the next doorway. Across to the left. Make the jump. Jump. Oops. Too high. Scroll screen slightly to the left, so that way we skip an animation and we don't get falling rocks, which takes up time. So it's pretty clever ways you can get through different sections. Um, might do it. Yeah, we'll do this the risky way. There. First go, nice. Okay, that's normally a pretty tricky jump to make, so glad we're able to make that. Get to there. Right. Push that across. That should be good enough. Let that fall. Can pick up one more point of health. All right, and we're onto the sliding puzzle. This can make or break a run. So I had a, I had a pretty average one last time. So uh, this one is looking pretty interesting. Um, there we go. This one's not too bad so far. Ah, over there. Yeah. Okay, that's a bit faster than the previous one. This will be interesting. Ah, no. Just lucky. 
Right. Right, get to the edge of the block. Make the jump. Good. That's the one block I hate. Just a button mesh to the end. You go another world record. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> that was not intended. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Mikey got to see it. There you go, Feldman. Martin. <laughs> Go for three in a row. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna be an absolute wreck in the morning. I've got work in the morning. <laughs> uh, before before I know it, another raid comes along and it's like, hey, you guess what? You just missed it. 